Okay, so when you make this um, base material, you want to make sure that you turn the bag with the print to the inside. You want the print inside. Even if there's no print, and there's no print right here, often whatever is used to put that ink down for the print is really, really sticky. And so when you melt it, it'll stick to your paper or to whatever you're using. So make sure you always turn this inside out. Um, some of them don't have it, but some of them do have it. So the entire outside of it, even though it doesn't have ink on it, um, is still really, really sticky. Another thing that uh, is a real benefit being in Kenya and Tanzania, they have tracing paper. Here in the U.S. we use wax paper, sometimes um, uh, a butcher's paper, really heavy butcher paper will work. But the nice thing about the wax paper is it has a little bit of a wax coating on it and allows it when you put your plastic down, so you have whatever you're ironing on, I'm just ironing on a sheet of cardboard, put that plastic, the paper, the wax paper down, put the plastic sheets on top, and then another wax paper over the top of that, and then I could iron right onto that. That keeps it from melting to my iron and keeps it from melting to my uh, cardboard. In Kenya, you have two types of tracing paper, really fine, um, lightweight tissue paper, and then a pretty heavy, it's heavier than this, tracing paper. And that heavy tracing paper is by far the best that I've come across in any country anywhere. Um, Tanzania has the same tracing paper. As you go further south, you pick up different types of tracing paper. Um, they're all, you, if you use a lightweight tissue one, it won't work, um, but that heavier one will work. So it's better even than this wax paper. Okay, so let's go over some common issues you're gonna have, um, just some troubleshooting problems. If your needle is good and your plastic's good, you're gonna get nice clean holes like this. And if you look at some of these holes, they have just a little bit of rough around the edges and some of them are nice and clean. This clean one is really what you're looking for. As you start running to this, it means one of two things. Your nail is not sharp, the points on your needle aren't sharp, or the plastic isn't adhered together well. And there's a cool pattern you can see in here. So you can see there's a lot of holes that don't show up down here. It's torn down here, but that's just I got too close together with the, each row of stitching. But you can see this sort of blank spot in here. And you see another blank spot there, blank spot here, stretches across those two stretches down here. Um, down here, it's all getting torn up. So there's a couple things going on. This blank spot down here is because the plastic itself hasn't been ironed together enough. So there's still um, gaps in it. And if we flip this over, you can actually see this. So this dark black is really indicative of it ironing together where the, the ink is. But you can see right here where the ink goes from kind of a dark color down here to a light and then back to dark. That means this one layer didn't iron and stick to the next layer over. And you can see it in here and you can't see it really well through here because it's all sewn up but this is much lighter than this area down here. So it's not ironing well across this, and you can actually see right here, these light streaks in here are where it didn't adhere together. We didn't press all of our layers together and iron them really well. So this needs to be ironed more to get rid of these big open gap areas inside here. So one of the things that you can look for as you start sewing is these patterns. If you see these patterns in here, then it's an indication that you're, um, plastic probably isn't ironed well, particularly if you have really good streaks of the nail doing a really, really good job and then suddenly junk and then back to good. Um, that means your nail's doing good, your nail's in good shape, but this is not so, but the iron, the plastic hasn't been ironed well together so well. So let's take a look at some of these holes and see if I can, oh, so this is actually really good. So this hole is fairly clean and these holes have little tabs stuck out on the end and you can see that. So this nail is doing a really good job punching good holes. This is where this row right here and this row right here got a little too close together and I punched through. Um, but you want a nice, clean, round hole, kind of like that one. Um, so this nail has a lot of little tabs stuck on it. There's a really good one. So it's a good indication that I need to sharpen using a file to use that file again and sharpen those points up so I can get a, a cleaner, uh, um, hole cleaner punch as we flip this over there's a couple of things you can also see in fact let's use this one this is a scrap I was playing with earlier so I'm going to zoom in and this is another another indication that your nail isn't doing what you want it to do so you can see all these little fuzzies stuck onto it 
So that should have popped free. That hole should have popped out, but it didn't. It stuck to it because the nail wasn't good. And if you look at it, you can see those fuzzies sticking up. So what you've essentially done, if you do this whole sheet that way, is that whole sheet will suddenly pop up and be really, really fuzzy, and it'll actually block air movement. Um, it'll stop the wind from getting in. And from this side, you can see where the holes aren't round, they're kind of stretched. And that's because it tore as opposed to actually uh, punching a hole through here. And you can see down here too, where it started to tear, you can see those holes aren't round. And it actually punched through right through there, um, but the plastic wasn't removed. So if we flip this over and look at this side, you can see those little chunks of plastic right there on those little holes right there that didn't pop out. So when you're running into trouble like that, where you get row of this going on, then it means the nail itself is, is bad and needs to be resharpened or um, sanded flat and started over. If you have really good rows and then a hit or miss and really good rows and a hit or miss, then that means that spot um, wasn't ironed completely. But as you go through and go through and do all of this, if you only have a spot here and a spot there, then I wouldn't worry about it and go ahead and do the whole thing. As you iron, this hole, as you iron it, tends to open up even more. And that's bad because we really don't want it to go above two millimeters. Um, different mosquitoes are different sizes, but two millimeters is the standard for most mosquito nets that are made, manufactured. So that's what I've targeted. Um, so you don't want to iron over this a lot if you can avoid it. So if you find that this isn't really good, then maybe what you'll end up having to do is cut this whole piece off, re-iron this side to get it where you want it, and then start over ironing or sewing again across the whole thing. So this is an extreme case, but you can see where this tip has been um, sanded off and, and has not done a good job. This is actually the tip from yesterday the, on the last video, but I went back to re-sand it and sharpen it, and I slid off, and you can see where I slid off to the right in this video and really mauled up the tip, and I went ahead and threw it back in the machine just to show you what bad holes were, and that's what you saw in some of those other pictures. Um, but that's a good indication of this nail. It'll punch a hole, but it's not going to do what you want. Now this nail is interesting. It's a really good sharp nail, but if you look at it, one tip is sticking out higher than the others. And it's right now the one in the back. I'm gonna roll it out, now it's the one on the right. It's just a little bit taller than everyone else. And that then means that one punches initially and the other three kind of tend to rip it. And that gives that, that little, instead of a nice clean circle, you have little four little tabs kind of sticking in. So, as you, the more off that gets, and this one I'd still sew with, um, but as the more off those tips get, the bigger that star-shaped pattern will be in the hole, and the more you'll have to, uh, the more likely you'll need to um, pull it out and repolish it. So let me see if I can find some good examples in here. Oh, so these are, let's pull this out of the way so I can get some black behind here. There you go. So. Let's get our pointer. So this is a nice, clean, round hole, perfect hole. This one's got a little bit of fuzz in it. This is the same needle on both sets doing this. So this little bit of tab there is probably because of bad plastic. Let's come over and take a look at, I thought I set up one of these to look really bad. Um, here's a good one. So that one right there still has two tips sticking out into the middle. There's a tip here. So this needle isn't cutting perfect. That's not bad, but you definitely would like it a nice clean cut on it. Um, here's a good series. So now you can see this isn't round. It has a shoulder and a shoulder, and there's a shoulder up here and a shoulder down there. So this one isn't punching, and there's another good example of that. The nice clean hole that we want like it is over here. So if you're running into these, these types of holes, then it's an indication that your needle is not clean, not nice and sharp, or the plastic's bad. And if the plastic's bad, then you'll only have a bad spot in one patchy area. So this is actually a really good, good shot of that. So you have the needle coming through nice and clean, and then it really does a terrible job and then picks up again. Now this is a bad needle on top of that, but you can see where there's this patch right in here that hasn't been ironed really well. Um, so if you have a good needle puncture all the way through in a bad spot, then it's just an indication that you're not doing a good job ironing. Um, and you can see that, let's move this over here to where we can see it. You can see it here where you have some spots that aren't doing well. It does well again through this whole process. It's a little hard to focus on a screen because it keeps trying to focus on the back. At any rate, so those are some common problems that you're going to have. And it comes down to 
kind of looking at it, you'll get used to it once you start doing it. This tear down here at the bottom where it starts tearing up, when you start sewing, the claw back here is really aggressive. And so as this fits in, in fact, let me put this in here. If you start here and move across this edge, so you can see this with, let me pull this camera out, put this up here. So if I start right here, instead of starting on the edge, this big fat area tends to hold it together. If I don't do that, if I just start sewing straight from the front, then I'll end up getting torn up like that. Or let me, I thought I had another one in here that was really torn up. Um, but it'll start tearing up like this at the bottom. And this, as you start working your way across, will get bigger and bigger and bigger. You'll end up with a spot about this big, which is fine because you're normally sewing um, really large sheets of plastic. So if you, if you tear up just this little bottom edge, it's not that big of a deal. You just take scissors, cut it off, um, and have a nice clean start to it. And this is over here. This is where I was starting. So this was starting in this direction. And you can see where the teeth have, have just chewed into that as you go. So you end up with a band on here that you're going to end up having to trim out. This is me just practicing, trying to get my rows nice and tight together. If you um, have a seamstress do this for you or a tailor, they're going to be able to hit this and, and do it with no problem. And this is, this is something I can't stress enough. Being able to run a sewing machine, particularly a treadle sewing machine, is an amazing skill. It's not a trivial thing. You, it takes time to get good at it. So if you're just doing this and you haven't done it before, then plan on burning four or five of sheets this size just to get in the groove and get good and start being able to do it. Once you do that four or five times, then you'll start doing really well. But when you first start out, it's gonna look like this and you're gonna be mad and really frustrated. So it's a good idea to relax, take a deep breath, go back and, and try again. If you have um, anybody who's a tailor or a seamstress, they're gonna be able to do this with no problem. If you're using a sewing machine, so these pellets end up piling out of the bottom. Um, they end up piling up in here. It's just a little brush, you can brush those out. I'd stay on top of this because if this gets in deep enough, if this gets um, stuck in here deep enough, you can start melting that plastic in there um, because it gets wedged in between a wheel or a roller. So I just brush it out and blow it out um, every hour or so. And then um, you can recycle these pellets uh, if you do the tile project that's on there. Otherwise, you're just going to want to um, burn them up in a trash pile or something like that. At any rate, uh, remember when you do this, I pull the, the bobbin assembly has to be pulled completely out. The nail has to be able to come down through here and clear it. Every single time I put a nail in, every, every single time I put one of these nails in, I grab a hold of the wheel over here and cycle it slowly all the way through to make sure it clears the deck. It doesn't always do that. These nails aren't straight. Um, they're little pieces of wire that are stamped in a factory so they're, they're never as um, straight as you'd like them to be. That's another thing you can do if you're finding that the, the needle looks good um, but it's not cutting right. You can grab a hold of it and just turn it while it's stuck, set, set up inside here and see if you get a better cut. Sometimes that's all it takes because if the nail is, hold on a second, if the nail is, instead of being straight, tilted just a little, then as the foot's running through, it's pushing sideways and, and trying to grip it. So you can rotate it and get that bend going the direction you want it to go. So you can try just rotating this nail um, and that may be all it takes to, to clean up your cuts. But I always run it through by hand first and I can say that it, you'll mess it up and hammer it into the deck. And when it hits the deck, it'll smash the points possibly bend the nail and then you're starting over from scratch. But you'll only do that a couple times and then you'll remember to always run it through by hand first. If it gets stuck down here, some of the industrial sewing machines have um, extra uh, pieces in here that don't easily come out. So just be ready for that. I always run it slow a couple of times just to make sure I know how my machine's gonna work. The treadle sewing machines work awesome. They're great if the person knows how to do it. In those pictures, we're all smiling. I, I think I sent those pictures of all standing around the treadle machine. It's because all of us are there trying to learn how to run the treadle sewing machine. And it, if you've tried it, you can go backwards instantly. So you're going do, 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 and it just starts pushing backwards. So it's, a, it's a, another skill on top of everything else. So if you have a tailor or seamstress um, initially to help you learn how to do this, this will go really, really fast. If you have the money, um, then it's a good idea. Uh, the one thing I like about this project is I can hire um, people to go out and pick plastic off the streets and clean it. Um, so I'm paying them for clean plastic. 
taking that plastic, I can pay for someone who has an iron and have them iron and make those sheets and then inspect the sheets. If they're not good, reject them, send them back and have them really make them the way you want them. And then that can be purchased by someone who has a sewing machine and do this. So you've essentially employed a lot of people. So employing a seamstress um, or tailor would be a huge benefit uh, to the economy because there's so many cheap clothes, so much cheap uh, stuff is coming in that this is a real job that they could do really easily and, and really start knocking out windows. And again, it all comes back to advertising. Um, the, when we were in, um, so I can turn this around. When we were in uh, Lusaka the last time, two times, two, three, or five years ago, there's a cholera outbreak and, and you have open sewers everywhere. So you could, the, if you're, you now cholera's waterborne, which means you really have to be drinking. It has to get wet on your food. But the flies and the cockroaches and everything are moving in and out of houses, particularly along the sewer lines, with wet still on their feet. So this is not only really going to prevent malaria, it's going to really cut down, I think, on a lot of airborne, insect-borne pathogens. Um, and this is the whole idea of sealing a house for mice, rats, insects, everything else is, is sort of a, an educational step. It's going to take a lot of work. That's the hardest part of this whole thing is the educational side of it. So at any rate, there are the troubleshooting problems that I've come across on this. If I think of some more, I'll, I'll post them up there. Um, I'm really sorry I didn't think about the mosquito net because it's something I've been doing this whole time. Um, and really what it lacks is advertising. So that's what I put my energy into. Um, this summer, this spring, we'll go out and test the uh, pipes on um, some hunting sheds that, that I've ha hopefully have lined up in the deep south where there's a lot of mosquitoes down in the southern part of the United States and then uh, again this summer and then hopefully over to Lusaka, Zambia um, later this summer. So we'll see. Um, if you have questions, shoot me an email.